Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I want to talk a little bit about the announcement that came from NetGate in regards to PFSense Plus, particularly the Home Plus Lab uh, versions of the software. It apparently also includes uh, the TAC Lite license as well. So let's go look at uh, the blog post. And here you'll see addressing changes. Now this came out on the 25th and it looks like they updated it uh, yesterday. So let's let's just take a look and see what they have to say here. So it says that they're announcing that the Home Plus Lab version of PFSense Plus, which was free, by the way, uh, that is the commercial fork of their open source software. Uh, PFSense uh, Community Edition is what they call their free uh, and open source software. So it's uh, that PFSense Plus for home and lab is no longer available by a download. They have completely cut it off. So they're no longer going to offer it and they're not going to update it. So if you're on the home lab or on the tech light version, Unless now, now there's a there's a caveat here, TacLite uh, will continue to be supported if you have a NetGate appliance. In other words, if you purchase their hardware, uh, that came automatically with a TacLite uh, license, and you will continue to be supported as usual. But if you chose a TacLite license for hardware that you provided. Or you elected to down, you know, pick up the home and lab, then you're stuck because now you don't have any way of of uh, being able to either renew the license. Uh, it, it expires annually, and there's no way to get updates. They're not going to update it either anymore either. So. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of a problem. So let me uh, let me just go over here to the s support for a, mo a moment, and let's take a look at the licensing that they had. So these were the three tiers for PFSense Plus, so, and TacLite was what I had. I I had. They said that this would eventually. I think there might be a caveat down here. Uh, so there's it included no no charge when purchasing a NetGate appliance. The zero to ping is for people that are using a NetGate appliance or AWS or Azure uh, versions of their firewalls. So basically, this is as is support. You can get questions answered, but it was kind of you know at their discretion and their time for the whether they wanted. To deal with it or not, there was no response time, and yeah. So at one point, their license said that this would be uh, moving to one hundred and twenty nine dollars a year in support fees, uh, and then I don't know if they would provide any additional services for that. They never implemented that part of it, so. Unless you have NetGate hardware or you're on AWS and or Azure, this license is gone. The TAC Pro is, and the TAC Enterprise are the only two licenses that you have left. So, in other words, if I wanted to continue on with PFSense Plus, at some point I would need to upgrade to this $400 a year Pro license or which would be ridiculous, but $800 a year enterprise license. The only difference between those two is that your, your, your time to response is much shorter and you have telephone support on the enterprise license, whereas it's only email or the support portal on the TAC Pro. So yeah, not, not good. So let, let's, let's, let's drop back here to this. So why are they doing this? So the reason they're doing it is, according to the blog post here, they had run into some situations where companies that were were marketing hardware separately, they aren't marketing the the NetGate versions of the of the hardware or appliance, and they were basically furnishing the hardware, and then they would go and download PFSense Plus put a license on it, install it, and then sell it. 
Well, that's illegal. I mean, that, uh, according to the license for PFSense Plus, you can't do this for commercial use. It's only for non-commercial use. And yeah, so that would be a copyright violation. And so, yeah, <laughs> so that's the reason why they're saying they're doing this is because they've had problems with people taking advantage of them, which, <clears throat> of course, their only recourse is to sue them. And that's, an, uh, that's going to cost them some additional money to do that, right? So if you're not receiving anything in and you don't have any money uh, in which to sue them with, then it has to come from other sources of revenue. So the PFSense Plus all came about back in uh, on Valentine's Day of 2022, where they offered this no-cost home and lab version of PFSense Plus. So all you had to do was you could take your existing version of PFSense CE, Community Edition, and then you could just get a license from the website, the portal, and then you could apply it to your PFSense CE. It would automatically upgrade it to PFSense Plus. However, that, that, that key exchange between the portal and your software is one shot. It's only good for one time. You you have to go back. If you were to rebuild the box, you would have to go back. And I did. I had to rebuild the box. And, and I elected to go with the TAC Lite instead of the home lab version. Well, both of those are now dead. So they said there have been thousands of installs uh, in 2023 alone for this. So I don't know why they mentioned that. I mean, it's like, Oh, so you saw an opportunity to make additional money off the home lab crowd. That I mean, $400 a year for a corporate environment. And remember, that's a recurring cost. That 400 bucks is every year that cash register is going to ring because your key is going to expire. So, yeah, you have to keep paying them 400 bucks a year uh, to continue to use the software on PFSense Plus. Uh, now, if, if you're in a corporate environment, 400 bucks is nothing. I mean, $800 is nothing either. Uh, I remember when we had the uh, A product from Cisco, and that's the security product that we used. Cisco changed that, made it more expensive, and so we left. We left them <laughs> because it was just too much to maintain. And it was actually cheaper for uh, one of the other defense contractors to just write uh, a security uh, piece of software that included things that the uh, Cisco A, A plus didn't it didn't uh, include. So yeah, so I mean, it's and when you get into corporate or you know military environments where there's lots of money, um, yeah, it's not a big deal, but. In a home lab situation, that four hundred dollars step is pretty high. I would I wouldn't mind paying the one twenty nine or one hundred and thirty bucks a year that originally they said the the attack light was going to go go for. But uh, yeah, apparently I don't know what their reasons were for that. They don't actually tell us anything about this. So. But it does say that you're going to need a tax subscription, and this this one tax light is only available now to people that have NetGate appliances. So, yeah, that that kind of sucks. So what they're going to do is they're saying that CE is not affected by this change, and you can continue to use PFC CE at no cost. But here's the problem. PFSense CE, before there was PFSense Plus, used to update pretty regularly. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't say it would be every six months on the dot, but it was, you know, give or take two or three months going either way, you know, that they would do upgrades. Uh, and they would add capabilities on to the community edition. Once CE Plus, once PFSense Plus came out, they, they, they practically buried CE. I remember sitting with uh, 2.6 point something something for uh, almost a year and four months. And I was like, what in the world? There was a lot of problems that were coming out around that time with 
uh, open SSH, open SSL, open VPN. Uh, a lot of CVEs were being written that were in the critical uh, area. And PFSense is kind of sold as an appliance. It's it's the operating system. It's their magic sauce, their their scripts for their uh, GUI. It's it's also, you know, their uh, choices of packages that work together. And so they always made sure that all of this thing worked. They always discouraged us from doing operating system updates independently of them. So in other words, you weren't picking up any of those package updates until they updated them in their core software. So I'm a little concerned that uh, given the history of what has gone on with PFSense CE, whether I'm willing to, you know, have software that potentially contains zero days or or even other other uh, um, vulnerable software installed in it, and PFSense and NetGate not caring uh, enough to decide to grace the CE, which they get no money for, with support in order for it to be updated to make sure that those security patches are done. Now they say, oh, don't worry, we'll take care of you. Yeah, 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 sure you will. Uh, you know, the focus on corporations is always on the money. So <laughs> I don't believe you. Sorry, I don't believe you. And the I really have two complaints with the way they handled this. And I, I, I think this is kind of a trend that seems to be going on in the open source community. I take a open, an open source project that's developed by open source community members not necessarily in all inclusive by NetGate. There are other people in the community that support PFSense besides NetGate, upon which NetGate depends in order for that their software to work. So, you know, the labor of a lot of people gets put into the open source community. They build these systems up that others take and build larger systems from it. And then they, they, they spin it off into PFSense Plus in this case. And then they want to charge you a support fee for it. Well, once they get a little money rolling in, then they start, they start doing things to the community version to entice you to move. So, or they do things like this, where they just, this is kind of high handed, you know, one day it's supported, the next day it's not, no notice, no warning, nothing to allow people to prepare for it. So what am I going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to backpedal to PFSense CE for now, and then I'm going to drop this thing in the, in the drink. Uh, I have some, I, <laughs> so I have a few concerns about uh, PFSense CE. First of all, what's to stop them from doing this again down the road where they just decide, well, I we guess we don't need CE anymore. And we'll, just get, we'll just get rid of it. Uh, there's nothing to stop them from doing that. They could easily say, okay, if you want PFSense, it's $400 a year. Take it or leave it. The... Um, the second thing that could happen here is the operating system upon which PFSense is written, which is a FreeBSD in this case, but there are packages that come from OpenBSD as well. So the, the, open, the BSD community has been slowly dying. Why? They're my age and, and older. <laughs> they're older than me in a lot of cases. So they're dying off. And uh, the, the youngins, ye youngins, uh, haven't been picking up uh, interest and to have no interest in picking up uh, where these old guys left off to continue working with uh, BSD. Now, BSD is a great security platform. It has the PF filters that are inside of the kernel of BSD has been a hallmark of uh, the uh, network security uh, software for quite some time. Uh, and and those had origins in Berkeley and also 
uh, from, I think, Sunni as well had a lot to do with that. Also, Sun, of course, did as well in their security models that they brought forward into that that allowed all of those things to work. So there's... Um, <laughs> There's a lot of a lot of things that went on there. There's also uh, there's also a version of containers for BSD that also went into the security realms as well in order to uh, protect the the code that was running from being changed or or uh, modified while it was in use. So there, I mean, there was a, there's just a ton of great security features that are on it. There's some good features that are on Linux as well, but uh, Linux does not have PF. It, they, they've got some of the Berkeley packet filters, but not, not, not to that degree, not to the degree that BSD has. So, uh, and that's just an opinion. What do they, what do they say here? So what's, what happens to your current install of the home and lab? It says here that you currently have PSS Home and Lab. You can continue to use it as we continue the transition away from the free version. <laughs> but they've already done the transition. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, the ability to get a timely updates with bug fixes, improved features may be limited and would require a tax subscription. If you need to reinstall your home lab, we will be unable to provide a no-cost upgrade path from PFSense CE, which is the way you have to do it. You have to go through CE, apply the update, and then it's, it's like I said, it's a one-shot. If you're on a, uh, a NetGate appliance that says no impact, I'd like to, uh, to spend a moment and thank my Patreons and channel members. Thank you for your support. You allow me to do new things with the channel, to test out new ideas, to come up with new concepts that I wouldn't otherwise be able to do. And I wanted to thank you for your help. If you wish to become a channel member, there's you, you can just click on the join button uh, down below. Or if you want to become a Patreon, you can be that as well. So with that, I think, uh, I think my, uh, in summary, I think what I'm intending to do here is I'll transition temporarily to CE to get whatever updates will be provided, which I doubt will be very many, if at all. And, uh, and, and, uh, and I will be saying goodbye to PFSense. I will not be going to OpenSense. OpenSense has a basis under, I mean, it, it's basically a fork of PFSense, has the same issue with uh, the BSD, uh, because it runs on BSD, it does not run on Linux. So I'm probably going to be looking at a more modern version of a firewall. Anyway, <laughs> that's all I had for today. I hope to see you again in the future. And uh, please like and subscribe. I hope to see you in the next video. And bye for now.